Everybody who's not here, raise your left hand. Oh, I see a couple more that we've got to wait for. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, today's October 1th. <laughs> First day of October. Um, just as a note, I, do you have this in your bulletins, um, this page? It's uh, just a page that uh, reminds us that October is uh, Church Worker Appreciation Month, you know? So for all the people that help out, the deaconesses, the pastors, the uh, elders, uh, the, the teachers in the, in the Christian schools, and the wonderful organists and piano players and choir people, you know, you're very much appreciated. And everybody who does their little bit here and there, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're much appreciated. And also, um, this day is LWML Sunday. Who knows what LWML stands for? In the back? Lutheran Women's Missionary League, right. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, my wife has been past president in the New England district of the LWML. Uh, she and I attended the national convention uh, back in June of this year. And uh, their mission goal, if you will, was to raise, for this coming year is to raise over $2 million dollars and they had voted for like 33 different global mission projects here in the United States and elsewhere. And, you know, it's just wonderful the work that they do uh, to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we, we thank the LWML also. All right, let's rise for our opening hymn, The Church's One Foundation.
with that in mind, we begin this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, oh boy, who could stand? And since we are gathered here to hear God's word and to call upon him in our prayer and in our praise and to receive the body and blood of, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we indeed have sinned in our thoughts, words, and deeds. And therefore, we cannot possibly free ourselves from our sinful condition. But together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has indeed given his son to die for you and for me. And for his sake he forgives us all of our sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore announce the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 24 this morning. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this? Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you did not spare your own son, but rather gave him up for us all. Grant that by faith we may trust in your promises and live according to your will. We pray this through our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings for this morning. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, the second chapter. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift a sword up against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall hear from our choir.
Thank you, choir. Lovely, lovely. Our second reading is Peter's first letter, the second chapter, beginning at verse 4. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become a cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, and for us and for our, for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and great man, and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, who shall be buried. 
third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who is the peace from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn for today. time I would like to invite uh, to come forward all of our children under the age of 20. There should be a few. Are, the, are you the only girl, princess? <laughs> ah, you can be the, well, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Do you guys know what a king is? What's a king? Um, which definition, Christian definition or country definition? Uh, I'll take any definition. Yeah, for a king of a, over a country. Okay. People who are basically powerless in England. People who are what? Power. But, um, powerless in England and other countries. Like usually they're just like ceremonial. Oh, so they have to have somebody who does what? Back in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they rule the castle. They rule over the castle? Okay. Yeah, well, not just medieval. Just a second. Earlier this earlier this year, I watched on television as Prince Charles in England was crowned King of England, Charles. So he's so they sat him in a big fancy chair, and they put on a lovely crown like you're wearing. Uh, and uh, he, he's their new king. Uh, his doesn't say happy birthday, no. It probably says, happy kingdom, Charlie. Anyway, what's in the box? Well. What's, what's this? An animal. An animal. What kind of animal? A lion. And... What's the, what's the lion called in terms of the jungle? Uh, king of He's king the king of the jungle. I am the king of the jungle. And I'm I am, I'm I am king because I eat all of you. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't pull on my hair. I'll go eat you. Can you eat me? Can you eat me? I'm still alive. Uh, yes. Well, a few years ago, my wife and I went to Africa, and we were riding in this little small bus out into the uh, desert and the uh, jungle, and sure enough, we came across a lion and his wife and a couple of little baby lions, and we were only about, I don't know, as far away as the people in that first pew there. That's how close we were to these lions. And all I can say is, I was glad I was in a bus. Because <laughs> if I was on my feet without other people around, rawr, the king of the jungle would have eaten me up. He's not the king of the jungle, he's king of the savannah. Anyway, he's the king of the jungle. Now, my question is, do people have a king? Not just the people in England, but... Yeah. Here's my king. He looks like Hercules. He looks like a Greek god. Well, he's not a Greek god. He's the god. I know, but still, he looks like one. Yeah, well, that's because he... Jesus came down, he didn't wear a crown, he didn't sit in a royal chair, but he is our king. He created all of us, first of all, okay? And then he came to rule over us so that we could get along with each other. And he taught us nice things to do for each other. And here he's looking up to, who do you suppose he's looking up to in this picture? God. Up to heaven, yeah. Yeah, probably looking up to heaven, and he's, is he sad or smiling? Smiling. Smiling, he's looking up to heaven to his father. And he says, hey, dear father, I'm having a great day. Yeah. Yep, he's having a great day. It was probably right after Easter. I won't go into details. <laughs> but anyway, Jesus is our king. And that's the subject of today. He's, we got the lion king of the jungle, and we've got Jesus, the king of the world. He's your king and my king. And he's sort of a lion. You know, we respect him, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, boys and girls, you can go back to your seat. And thank you for coming up.
Grace, mercy, and peace to all of you gathered here this morning. The theme, as you've gathered from the children's lesson before us, is the king is coming here on LWML Sunday. The king is coming indeed. Now, way back in Genesis, God promised to Adam and Eve that he would one day pay for their and eventually all of humanity's curse of sin, disobedience and lawlessness brought upon humanity that started, ironically, in the Garden of Eden. It was a beautiful, perfect place. But as we know from reading the book of Genesis, young Eve succumbed to temptation and she ate of the one piece of fruit that God said, don't bite into this fruit. I find it ironic and perhaps not so ironic that the sim we've talked about this before, the symbol for Apple computer is what? An apple with a bite out of it. Hmm. Anyway, sin, sin, as we perhaps know, is every thought, word, and desire and deed which is contrary to God's law, God's big ten. You know, if everybody obeyed his big ten, the whole world would get along with each other. There wouldn't be wars throughout history and the killing of people. We would be gracious and loving and people would get along. You wouldn't need 10,000 laws like we have in our country at the moment. We would only need the big 10. Anyway, God's prophets pictured the coming Savior King of his promise for his people. And this saving work of the Savior proclaimed in the name of the Lord for God's people would crush the evil head of sin. And who's the head of sin? Satan. Right. And he would crush our sinful flesh in and through his saving work and his saving word this, and the witness of his son, Jesus, Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean, anybody? That's exactly right. Emmanuel means God with us. As we heard already this morning, King David proclaimed in Psalm 24, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, O ancient doors that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. You know, <gasps> that the king of glory may come in. And who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He comes to everybody, to their homes. He is the king of glory. Now, this was King David a thousand years before Christ. Now, God's only begotten son comes to the world in three ways. First, in the promised son, of David's king, or yeah, the son, King David's Lord, the world's savior, Jesus, Mary's human son. Secondly, he comes to us personally to our hearts through hearing of his word and by baptism and grace through faith not of ourselves, but as the ultimate gift of God. And thirdly, he comes to us in his great 
second coming and the end of time. And as we know, this time has not yet arrived. Now, Jesus was walking on earth 2,000 years ago, even as we speak and listen. I don't know, it just seems like, I don't know, around the year 2030. Maybe he'll come again. Anyway, it's obvious that the world needs to be rescued from itself. Rescued from itself today, wouldn't you agree? Yes. The onslaught of selfish war, the destruction, disease, and death, these are all around us, and we make it worse with our selfish ambitions. We all have selfish ambitions. At times, we have hatred of others. Now, if I was to say, do you, do you hate anybody here? You'd say, oh, no. But there are times, unfortunately, when we slip and slide and we hate other people. And we have self-centered greed. Paul, the Apostle Paul, spoke of the days of lawlessness in many of his letters. And through the eyes of sin, we also could easily become downcast and heartbroken because of evil in our world. And perhaps we would give up quickly because of the constant bad news. You know, that's the downside, if you will, of our mass media. I mean, in some of those who are seated here this morning, it was during your childhood that television was invented. And all of a sudden, we could see what was going on in another part of our country. And now we, we know what's gone, going on in the Ukraine and in Africa within a matter of seconds of those events happening. Whoa! No generation before ours could ever see and hear those things. Anyway, God's hope, peace, joy, and love for us is proclaimed in his holy, holy word. And that's what's great about coming to church at our Savior and hearing the word of God that overrides all that bad stuff we see on television and elsewhere. The purpose of God's church is to proclaim the gospel to all. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus reminded his disciples after he rose from the dead, and I quote, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations around the world. In his case, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things through the gospel, unquote. And Paul also in Romans chapter 1, the people of God have received the power of God's salvation and are instructed to proclaim this gospel to all people, to the Greeks, namely the non-Jews, the Gentiles, and to the godless barbarians, those evil people out there with weapons who are ready to just slaughter other people, and to the wise and also to the foolish. The gospel is our only hope. As the king of glory comes in with and through the gospel, we are buried with him. And one of the ways, or important ways, we were talking about this in Bible study this morning, is through baptism. And through baptism, we get washed. Our sinful pride and nature gets washed through the gospel, 
through the gospel of, and through the act of baptism which God has given us. It's a wonderful thing. And now, in our time, we have the word and the sacrament of God, which provides a way of also receiving the king of glory right now. We receive his true body and his true bud, um, blood, because the word of God is placed over these simple things. And it's a life-changing mes mes message for the whole world. So just like King David, we proclaim our Lord. We lift up your heads, O you gates, and we are lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. And we are reminded also that the uh, Mission Church spreads this word throughout the whole world, including our Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And as Paul says, the first thing we are to do is to pray for all people. Paul says, I all, first of all, then I urge that prayers for people and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and all who are in high positions, such as our own president and uh, Congress that are in session right now to try to figure out what's the best way going forward. It's a big responsibility that we have put upon them regardless of political party in order that we as a country likewise may live a peaceful and quiet and godly life. God desires that all people be saved. You know, how does it go in John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Right, have everlasting life. Today in our day, there was a little girl, and she was very fearful on a particular night. She was sleeping alone in the darkness of her bedroom, and she cried out to her mom and dad as a storm rolled across her Midwest town. Mommy, Daddy, come in here, she cried. She cried it in the dark of night as the storm rolled in and all the thunder and lightning was roaring out just outside of her bedroom. And she felt like the storm was right there with her. Mommy and Daddy came in and comforted her and reminded her that they were right next door in their room. And furthermore, they promised that God is in the room with you. And so you need not be afraid. And that's how it is for all of us as well. One way or another, God is going to take care of us. It's not like we walk out of this church room and then the Lord is still here. Oh, no. The Lord is with his kids every step of the way in our life. Yay. Anyway, the parents encouraged their daughter to go back to sleep. But awakened again and again by the rolling and roaring storm, she said to her parents the last time they entered her room, I know God is here. He is here with me, but I need somebody in here with skin on them. <laughs> hmm, we get that, don't we? As we look through the heavenly eyes of the King of glory, 
in the darkness of our sinful world, then we also see clearly the promise and protection of God for his people in Christ Jesus. He is our God with skin on him. A God who took on flesh and blood and made his way down the road of pain and suffering. And he finally got nailed to a wooden cross just a little larger than the one we have before us today. And he died a painful death for the sins of the whole world. But then he rose again a few days later. And may this LWML Sunday remind us likewise to be missionaries in every little and big way that God gives us. God gives us opportunity. You may have a neighbor who doesn't yet know the Lord and you can visit and you can ask if it's okay if you can pray for them and with them for whatever their needs might be. That's a small way. Or you can give of special offerings to help people. We were talking about that also this morning in Bible study. You know, the Holy Spirit prompts us to donate to various um, causes that help people on the streets and in the countries far away. We share the gospel at the will of Christ our Savior, and we will all ultimately have everlasting life now and in heaven. In Jesus' and precious holy name, amen. I'd like you to sing a song with me. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Yay! Okay, it's time for our prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all, yes, please stand, and for all people according to their needs. Ah. Merciful Lord, we pray that by your Holy Spirit we may not lose heart in all the various situations that come in our lives. Make us to be of one mind and will and that we may serve you with gladness, gladness, doing the works of your kingdom here and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, as redeemed children of God, the Lutheran Women Missionary League, being held by God's word, are inspired to share his gospel and all those that they are surrounded with by his grace. Please, Lord, bless the, the people of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this country and all their global work. Lord, in your mercy, say our prayer. Merciful Lord, grant the encouragement of Christ and the comfort of his love to those who suffer. And please, please bring healing, especially upon Carol and Barbara, Bob, Frank, Bill, Dan, Annetta, Carol, Laureen, Sarah, Beth, Emily, Jimmy, Kevin, Diana, Matthew, In all situations, even for those not specifically named just now, bring mercy and healing 
And we also pray for all the people of New York City who over this past week were just inundated with many, many inches of rain, with flooding streets and flooding uh, subway stations. I once lived in New York City in Manhattan myself years ago. I know what that can be like. Lord, get them through this emergency and bless them, Lord, with uh, drying up of this rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, what all these things, whatever else you know that we need, Father, grant these for him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray now the prayer which Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to or participate in our next hymn. 